tonight on The War. LaSort and I run drills with former NFL linebacker David Babor. Branch Warren tests if strength equals better shooting. I review STI's Matchmaster, and we go prone in stage three of the challenge. Amy. Call you on. Have you ever noticed that LaSort puts his name on yes. everything? Yes. Like yes. everything. What everything. is the deal? Literally, like, I guarantee you, underneath your seat cushion, you have your name on there. So you would think that I'd have 19 brothers and sisters and I always lost everything growing up, but I have one sister, so I have no excuses. I don't know. I don't know. It's I do. Weird. Weird. My, my like ears. People pain. probably see me shooting on the range. I have my initials, at least, on my ear pro. And so Darren's been through, like, three MacBooks now because he keeps spilling water on them. <laughs> so when one of our friends gets him a sippy cup as a joke, I walk in and I see he has his name on the sippy cup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it confused with any other baby's sippy cups. I mean, this is my sippy cup. <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> we've been on this whole athletic shooter tip, right? Yes. So today we decided to kind of see and figure out whether or not being a stronger shooter makes you a better shooter. Yep. Let's check it out. Former Rams linebacker David Babor runs Performance Vault in downtown Dallas, a specialized training facility where he works with professional and Olympic-level athletes, as well as elite military, law enforcement, and wounded warriors, or as he calls them, adaptive athletes. While we waited on bodybuilder Branch Warren to arrive, Lasort and I asked David to run us through some drills that would pay off on the freestyle field. Okay, boys, balance. How does it affect shooting? How are we aware of balance? so that we can be better than what the last shot was. Mm -hmm. One, two. Cole Yo needs three, balance in his hyperactive three, trigger finger. Four, one, two, one, He was looking a little three, close there, brother. <laughs> one, <Oop>. one, one. <sighs> yeah, I felt oh, oh, okay. I'm gonna do uh, a little different for you. We're gonna up the ante a little bit. Ah! This should help his dance moves. I'm a 2014 thriller, baby. <laughs> My dance moves are strong. Lasort's never done anything that could pass for dancing. Here we go. Four, three, four, three. Here's manipulation. Four, three, one. All right, boys, let's get on to something that's actually challenging, yeah? Yeah, right. let's do it. Okay, do it. actually challenging? We went from balance, now we're on to stability. What is stability? Specifically with us, we're worried about stability through the upper body and the core. We're gonna use this 10-foot slosh pipe that has water in it that's for weight. That's never a good idea. In college, we use something like that for different <laughs> purposes, but okay. <laughs> oh! Nice. Good, good. Okay. Look at those biceps. What biceps? Look at how straight your arms go. Oh, oh not right whoa, now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Suck the core in. Good, yep. Lock whoa. those elbows. Lock those elbows. <laughs> You're doing a little penguin. This thing's <laughs> hilarious. He's like, hey. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Safety first here at Performance Vault. Boys, Branch Warren yeah. just showed up. I saw him lift his car into a parking spot. <laughs> Don't get nervous, let's not be intimidated. We won't know until you guys get out to the range, but I think we've laid a good foundation with some of the drills here. I agree, and intimidated I am, and I want you to give me a t-shirt before he gets here, please. Someone get some sleeves on this yeah, man's shirt. Yeah, and soon, maybe long. All right, here's what we're doing. We're picking up the dumbbells. We're gonna basically do a hang clean, drop right into a squat, into a press, okay? That'd be one rep. So it's three complex movements, landing into one rep. So let's grab our dumbbells here. Feet shoulder width apart. We're about being efficient still, right? That's what the athlete's all about. So let's get some reps out because he's getting really. really <laughs> all, right. all right, you guys, boy, you boys go. <laughs> Ready? Hit it. <clears throat> so. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> I guess, uh. Yeah. Um, that's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. So now you've met Branch. Catch him this weekend at Mr. Olympia, where he's placed in the top 10 five times. He's also a big time gun guy, and we wanted to put his strength to the test out on the range. But first, David couldn't resist putting the big man on the world's craziest treadmill. All right, boys, this is the best torture device I got, the high trainer. We've got magnets on the bottom here that apply resistance to the belt. So much like pulling a heavy sled or pushing a, a prowler or something like that with weight on it, this is gonna be able to create a resistance and a demand while we trust a forward lean. So whether we're running with a rifle or we're out hunting, eventually we start to stand up, we start to bow our back because we fatigue, right? right. There's a lot of core strength involved with trusting your angle and your lean. He's just gonna find his balance as he starts to jog. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Yeah, brother. It's gonna sequence the things that are most important. Go ahead, relax. See, that wasn't so bad. Is that thing speaking English? Fast, 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 fast. 
kind of feel like Fred Stop Flintstone, huh? Yeah. yeah. So now we have the perfect guy to help us answer our question. Does a stronger shooter make a better shooter? Lasor came up with an evil little game to find out. When we have a guy here who has biceps as big as my waist, we're gonna test strength and endurance somehow, some way. So the only way I really devised is shooting this M1A 308 20 round magazine. We're gonna start with the first shot, clock starts at that point. Every seven seconds on that mark, another shot is going to be called for. At that point, the shot has to be broken within a second of the call for the shot. That's gonna happen every seven seconds until the magazine is empty if we can last that long. Ready? Yep. Fire. Oh, he is trying oh, to shoot on command. Good. It's tough to do. Give it a little time. Fire. Shoot. I think he might beat you. I think he's going to. Shoot. Fire. Shoot. You getting tired yet, buddy? Uh, absolutely. Fire. Starting to get hard. Those are both low. Well, I, I know your pain right now, brother. Shoot. Come on! Core muscles are hurting. Shoot! Coleon, you were hurting right about now? Pretty much. <laughs> I was doing the Harlem Shake. Shoot! Fire! That's longer than seven seconds. Shoot! You can't even make it, shoot! This is not a point. You're set. so tired. <laughs> you still got some rounds! It hurts! Fire. Oh. All right, this is where the fatigue is setting in a little bit, I believe. Fire. Oh. I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> God. Shoot. I've never felt pain like this. <laughs> Bring the pain, baby. Bring the pain. Shoot. Shoot. Nice. Uh, Fire. Ah. Uh, oh, God. Those shoulders are screaming, ain't they? <laughs> you like doing a Shoot. dance. Shoot. <laughs> well, that was embarrassing. But I was way more prepared for LaSorte's next test with a gun I'd spent some time on. I've never really been a big fan of race guns. And by race guns, I mean guns that are purposely built from the ground up to be used in competitions. So when I got the chance to shoot the STI's Matchmaster, I wasn't exactly wiping away drool in anticipation. There's so much going on with this gun, my eyes didn't really know where to look. My eyes frantically hopped from one feature to the other, trying to make sense of all of the holes, lines, buttons, lights, and lasers. However, Underneath all of the gun's seemingly superfluous gizmos and honeycomb porting, there is a silver lining of cool that can't be denied. You see, I made the mistake of looking at this gun through the same lens I look at Glocks, commercial 1911s, and every other mass production gun. This isn't just a gun. In the hands of a competition steel shooter, it's a samurai sword, a work of art that begs to be mastered and shot with unexplainable speed and precision. However, in my hands, it's the catalyst for another ammo shortage. All I wanted to do was to keep shooting this gun faster and faster and faster. With most guns, you're struggling to find sight pictures, fight off arthritis-inducing recoil, and triggers with more creep than a TLC video. With the STI Matchmaster, the gun damn near shot itself. The red dot has a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, shooting becomes a point-shooting extravaganza. This gun is very well balanced, so transitioning from target to target was child's play. See, it's easy to shoot this gun fast. I constantly kept trying to shoot even faster at the expense of accuracy. A gun like this is about discipline. You can't truly appreciate a gun like this unless you learn to master what it's capable of. So until I'm ready to master a gun like the STI Matchmaster, I'll just enjoy it the only way I can shooting the hell out of it as fast as I can on as much steel as I can. So, all right, 
what we are going to do is shoot this gun as fast as we can possibly shoot it on a timer. We're gonna start at the beep. Branch's grip strength is probably four, five, six times as strong as mine and Coleon's. I just wanna see how that works to be able to stabilize a handgun, control it and recoil, and allow him to shoot fast. And I've said it a million times, Coleon's trigger is the fastest trigger I've ever seen, so Branch has his work cut out. I know I'm not gonna beat Coleon in this one. All right, let's do it, guys. You ready? Yep. So I think I was proven right again with this experiment, even though the times might not indicate that. Um, we had the M1A test, I think, showed that Branch just served, his muscles served better than, uh, than ours did. And on this test, Coleon, of course, had the fastest time. What happened was he was able to shoot, what, like just under a second slower, but still managed to hit almost every shot on target. Right. Whereas I was a, I was a lot faster, yep. yet I probably hit maybe 25, 30% of right. my shots, if that. Yeah. I don't know if um, grip strength played a part in that or not, yeah. but uh, definitely, um, you know, that, that muzzle jump, you know, you get when you yeah. shoot, there was like almost no recoil in that gun. None. So. Because, I mean, it's compensated, it's meant to do that, but then your strength, I think, on top of that, because I still get bounce on that thing. You weren't getting any bounce. I think that's that was apparent because you were hitting so clearly. It was like shooting an airsoft for you. I mean, he shot 20 rounds in four seconds flat almost. Yeah. And uh, that's crazy. I couldn't, I don't know how you pulled the trigger that fast. <laughs> so I think your build in what we did today, your muscles, your muscle mass, your structure, I think it absolutely served the purpose that I was thinking it would in both the rifle case and the handgun case, whether the time showed or not. Certainly it did on in the first instance with the rifle. You just weren't, were, were not shaking as badly. We were both beat. We wanted to almost give up at like 18, 17, and you were still good to go. So one thing we were talking about earlier is you're five weeks out of Mr. Olympia, which is your Super Bowl. It's the biggest event you have. You've placed second, which means you're the second best in the world. Why is the NRA important to you? You know, when this, this close to the Mr. Olympia contest, uh, I don't do anything. I right. say, I'm so focused on training. Yep. Um, I never take time out of my training. You know, this because NRA is important to me. You know, the Second Amendment's important to me. Um, you know, my grandfather taught my father how to shoot, passed his guns to him, and um, my father taught me how to shoot at five years old. And I got my first gun when I was uh, seven years old. I've been hunting and shooting ever since. So. Right. You know, the only reason we still have the right to bear arms is because of the NRA. Absolutely. So, uh, and that's something that uh, me as a father and a sportsman and a shooter that I want my children and my grandchildren to enjoy. Okay, that's where his gear is going to help him out because he's got his legs covered. You're going to be running through the weeds in your dry fit shorts. Adventure breeds character. And the path should be less traveled. Independence breeds survival, and you must depend on who you know you are. Your inspiration drives you to never waste a moment. As a pioneer, an advocate, a gun owner, it's time to celebrate your lifestyle every single day. Well, you guys looked like you had a great time with David Babora and Branch Warren the other day. You did. You yep. did? Mm -hmm. um, I know Katie and I want to join that workout session Heck next time. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing bigger. because of David. One thing that's great about David is all the work that he does for wounded veterans. I mean, just a great American. And so all the other stuff that he gave us, all the knowledge was fantastic. But what he does for Americans who have given a lot for this country Agreed, is great. Agreed, completely. Well, I mean, as much fun as you had, you still didn't answer the question. How important is strength out on the freestyle field? I think it's, it's give or take. You don't want to be too strong where you don't have any dexterity or agility or ability to move. Um, but then you don't want to be so weak that you have problems holding up a rifle and maintaining its recoil. Mm -hmm. You know, strength does play a role, I think, in two aspects of the freestyle field. One, getting down into a prone position, getting up from that prone position in a very explosive way might be a little different than just brute strength, but then also operating the shotgun. So in stage two, we had the shotgun. When you're working that slide and you're reloading the gun, as we both did have to do in stage two, um, 
managing that takes strength. Yeah, but Katie? Where are we at in the field? All right, Noir, don't be mad at me. You are down by seven seconds. Lasor is leading right now, going into stage three. This week's stage might be the trickiest yet. Shooters start on the berm for five 90-yard AR shots, move sideways to a prone position for five more, and then head to the trees for five standing shots. After landing their final hit from that position, they will sprint back to the center for one more from 90 yards out. After a quick hit, it's a mad dash to the 15 for five shots with a handgun. Wait for the beat. Good. Oh man, okay, so I know this is gonna be your absolute favorite stage because down. this one, you gotta run through the woods. How do you feel about that? You okay. used to that? I don't believe that. I think you probably grew up playing playing in the woods. You're an outdoors guy. That's what you strike me as. <laughs> yeah, on the concrete. <laughs> he stuck through those woods. Okay, that's where his gear is gonna help him out because he's got his legs covered. You're gonna be running through the weeds in your dry fit shorts. Which is true, which is very, very true. I know Darren likes laying down a lot. He does. Yeah, well, even when y'all get on the berm, yeah, when he's you choose to stand up, he still he's... gets down. Is that considered prone when you yeah. do it on the berm, too? No, unfortunately, I'm going to have to lay down, too, because it allows you to get a stable platform, and you can hit shots faster. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and it's all about speed and time right now. I understand much. that. Five. He seems to be doing pretty well right now. Claire. Woo. That was a run. All right, John, what was my time, buddy? I got you at 51.13. 51-13, that's gonna be a tough one to beat, baby. Shooter, ready? Ready. Wait for the beat. Go, Cody on! Absolutely. I mean, I, I, oh, I didn't do that. Of course. Oh, I mean, what was that? He did say, too, he was like, I'm going prone, that way I can stabilize myself. Right. Oh, he's daring. He is getting Does it done. Does this make you nervous? It's making me nervous. His woods aren't the best. Cody on, don't be favorite, scared! Though. They're bears in the woods! They're bears in the woods, don't get scared. I'd be scared of cheers with his like bare legs Three, open. Right. Right. Prone, prone, prone. Prone. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh. This is a run. This uh -oh, is exciting I'm though. This is really exciting. Well, We're kind of neck and, and neck scared. right now. I'm scared. I'm scared that he's doing so dang well right yeah. here. I'm worried about what the score is going to be. So cool. I do like too all Five of the shots. gun safety. He always yeah, has yeah. the muzzle out away from Absolutely. anybody that's downrange. That's really cool to highlight yep. those points. I like that. Guns on safe. Clear. <laughs> All right. He's blowing it up. He just shoots as fast as he He has can. the machine gun fingers. I yeah. mean, he has a quick trigger finger. There is no doubt about it. I got you at 53.88. Oh! And I thought you were going to have him on this course. I still want to have that tape reviewed. Right. So we need to go back and look He's at that and make sure. He's not a flag on that one. Official tie. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Right. It was so close. You shot the handgun really, really fast. At 10 yards, you can do that. At 15 yards, it makes it tough. I'll be the first to admit, I have trigger finger impulse control problems. If there's rounds in the magazine, they need to be burned. And I'm pretty sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that I sprinted about 100 yards. Right. And so my mind was still in overdrive mode. And since I am a streaker shooter, because I shoot off rhythm, I think a lot of that was getting to the gun and being on that yep. same, that same mm -hmm. kind of pace. Now, what I was impressed by in this course is how quickly you got into prone and yeah. out of prone. I was more like dainty and, you know, I guess it's my age. I know you're going to say it, so I'm going to pre <laughs> I wouldn't have used the word dainty, <laughs> but I'm going to go with it. I because was. It, it was just, just like kind of like I was going like to pick flowers or something. I kind of like bending down and then going. You really got into that position, and that saved seconds. You know what I also learned from that? I probably should do it more often yeah, because it's more conducive to my impulsive trigger finger. That's yeah. true. Because with the stable Maybe platform, I can just have this ability to get up quickly that probably kind of gives me a bit of an advantage instead of trying to stand on top of miles like Superman right. and shooting <laughs> freestanding. Well, good stuff, guys. Katie, where are we at in the stage? Okay, so right now, Lasort is winning by 10 seconds. He's at 2 minutes and 11 seconds, and Coleon is at 2 minutes and 21 seconds. It'll be exciting next week, so we hope you guys tune in.
next week on Noir. So, do you think that he has an advantage since this is his rifle that he shot a lot? Hey. Yep. Well. Hit first shot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take that as an advantage.